everybody, and we are back with Season 3 of the Big Propaganda Wrestling Podcast Network. We are live in Houston, Texas right now, and we're about to get ready to turn up. We have a good one for you today. But first, make sure you guys like, subscribe, man, and hit that notification bell. Um, drop those comments. Give us a thumbs up. Um, follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. We on all of that. And if you're new here, man, again, man, hit that notification bell right now. Hit that subscribe button. And um, stay tuned to all the heat we having. Um, but right now, we have a special guest in the building, man. We have Brad Gilmore in the building, man. Let's clap That's it up me. for him, man. That's me. That's him. Hey, and if you guys don't know, I mean, Brad, you've been killing it all over. You're a two-time, two-time. Two-time. Number one best-selling author. Yes, sir. Um, you're on the CW. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're a part of Reality of Wrestling. Mm -hmm. Journalist. Yep. Mm -hmm. Musician. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, what... Do you not know how to do? Yo, I am the dress shoe wearing. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, yes. Rick okay. Flaring. Yeah. Okay. okay. Good hair having. Oh, okay. yeah. Entertainment yeah. world champion. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm the best okay. thing to happen since you came out the womb. Can I get a womb? Woo! No, hey, thank oh, God. my goodness. That was great. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. This is an awesome setup. Y'all been doing great stuff for the wrestling community, especially here in the H. Put thank on you, so many you. of my favorite Sports and entertainers, you know, from the Thank mysterious you. Q, Fly, Def, Edge, Stone, Promise Braxton, Thank the best you. of all time, Promise Braxton, by the way. Mm. My favorite wrestler ever is Promise Braxton, the chosen one. So I'm happy to be here. I'm honored. Oh, man. She's intimidating. Hey. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I know she's why you awesome. said yeah, yeah. She's <laughs> awesome. She's awesome. She's awesome. But yeah, man, we are definitely glad to have you, man. It's been a long time coming, man. Yeah. I believe we've been we talked about this sometime last year when it finally happened, man. Um, first off, man, we want to know who is Brad Gilmore? Yeah, man, that's a great question. Uh, you know, we're about to sit on uh, Simon Freud's couch here. I'm about to lean back, talk about my mom. No, um, <laughs> you know, man, I'm just, I'm just a fan. I'm a fan of the arts. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a fan of this city. You know what I mean? Houston, by the end of next year, is going to be the third largest city in population in the United States. We're going to overtake mm -hmm. Chicago, right? And, and, and why I bring that up is because people like yourselves, people like me, we're trying to make Houston a major media market. Yeah. So I think stuff like what y'all are doing is awesome. And that's why I've always had this uh, burning desire, to answer your question, to uh, really put on for my city um, and, and do things that I'm 100% interested in, that I find interesting, that, mm. that really uh, satisfy me creatively. Okay. And that's why when you know, you're doing the intro, it sounds pompous, right? Like he's an author, he's a, a <laughs> wrestling commentator, he's a news anchor. Mm -hmm. But it's just because all these things interest me. And I've always mm -hmm. been about trying to just, you know, go after the passions, right? You only got one shot at this, yeah. right? We all only got one shot. We might as well do the things that we're truly interested in because if you never do them, you never know. Right? Yeah. yeah, true, yeah. true, true, true. And um, first off, man, I, I mean, you know, we're going to get into the wrestling and everything like that, but I just want to highlight your accomplishments. Um, first off, congratulations on your media company. Oh, uh, thanks, man. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate big that. Big deal. Yeah, big with, deal. With that appreciate said, that. Man, um, let's let's go in, let's go deeper into that, man. What made you say, you know what, I want to start this media company? Again, for, for kind of piggybacking on what I just was talking mm -hmm. about is I, I've over the last couple of years, uh, as I've gotten more involved with uh, ESPN Radio. And with the CW network, I've been able to do a lot of really cool interviews, mm. talk to a lot of really cool people yeah. um, throughout all facets of entertainment, whether that's, you know, Mark Wahlberg, Jimmy Fallon, um, um, Maya, uh, Brian, Cedric the Entertainer. Yeah, Cedric the Entertainer we just had on. Mm. Um, I mean, the, the list kind of goes on and on. Brian Johnson, lead singer of ACDC. Um, I was like, man, you know. Why do why does everybody go to L.A. and go to New York and not come to Houston? Why do we have a big premiere here? We got mm -hmm. millions of people here. Mm -hmm. We got we got a flourishing economy. Mm -hmm. Texas is pretty much economy proof. So when I started looking at all these opportunities that were coming across my way, I saw it as a uh, avenue to parlay these opportunities into something larger and to be able to really produce content from whether it be podcast, television, film. There's a big bill in the Texas legislature right now trying to give film incentives to people here in Texas yeah. to come film here. And I want to make sure that I'm a part of bringing people here to the H and putting the H really a spotlight on it. So that was really the impetus of me uh, starting a media company. I am not a businessman. I'm a creative, <laughs> right? Gotcha. Anybody I've signed already, and I've signed several podcasts. We're producing a lot of shows right now. The press releases are about to come out. But I tell everybody, I'm a creator. I'm a creative first. 
So I, I'm not a businessman, but I'm going to try to help you be the best that you can be. And all these things mm. I've learned, I've been podcasting since 2012, mm. right? That's a long That's time. A long time. Mm. That's yeah. before the podcast boom. Well, yeah. I've seen this whole industry shift over the last 11 mm. years. And instead of somebody just trying to start out and finding their way by themselves, hey, let me give you some game. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I'm about building bridges, mm -hmm. not building up walls. Okay. So if I can give them something, an opportunity that I didn't have at that time, mm -hmm. that's where really the passion came from is let me put people on game, right? Mm -hmm. And I know Snoop Dogg said the game's to be sold, not told, but yeah, I'm telling it. True. You know what I'm saying? I'm letting people yeah. know because I don't believe in this gatekeeping mentality that some people mm -hmm. have, right? Yeah. If I know that information and I give it to somebody else, man, hey, look, like this is one of my best, my favorite quotes. Like if, if you have an apple and I have an apple and we trade apples, yeah. right? We both still have one apple, yeah. right? right? But if you have an idea and I have an idea and we exchange ideas, now we both have two ideas, right? right. We're leaving with something more than what we came in with. So that was really, again, the inspiration is to try to help people, you know, get to that next level with their podcast, with their TV mm -hmm. show, with their radio show, with their YouTube channel so that we can make Houston that number one destination for people. Mm. I like that. That's you know, incredible. I mean, I appreciate you giving us game. Yeah. You know? Hey, man, yeah. that's what I'm here to do. Hey. I'm here to yeah. help in any way that I can because I've been so privileged in my life to have so many people give me that game. Yeah. Show yeah. me the way. Open up a door for me that wasn't there before. Right. And it, it would be silly for me not to pay that forward. Yeah. And, yeah. and one of the things that I like that we do, you know, we actually study the game of podcasting. You know, we listen to different podcasts and, how they pronounce certain words mm -hmm. and then more deeply into like the wrestling podcast, because you know, the terminology, the wrestling terminology, you know, we try to get all that down. And, and I mean, I think we've been doing great, you know, I've and, been killing it, man. and the, the fact that we actually get to, to do this and, and see all this kind of stuff, it's just been great. And the knowledge, man, again, we appreciate yeah. it, man. So congratulations again on that media company. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. yeah. Do you think some of that game you just really, Absorb came from your time working with like the Houston press and, and, you know, the music blogs, hip hop, pop culture blogs you were doing also kind of really helped you develop that type of mentality and just put that knowledge on your brain. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, I remember I kind of got my start in the entertainment business. Mm -hmm. I mean, going back all the way to 2006, um, 2007-ish, it's when me and my best friend Avery Davis, who lives right up the street, We've been best friends since kindergarten, okay. uh, first grade, 99. Yeah, since 99. Yeah. You know and, uh, you know, we started making music together. Yeah. And you know, he was always a musician. I always had a passion to be creative in some way. I didn't know what that was going to be. Mm. And it turned out at first to be music. And it was, you know, hip hop mm. is where we first really started breaking in. And the Houston hip hop scene at the time was so rich with talent. Yeah. I'm talking about if you go from 09, 2010 up to 2012, yeah. when we were really active. There were so many guys on the underground scene, mm -hmm. some who are still flourishing today, like Les, um, yeah. um, yeah. Propane. Yeah. These were guys that I was running into uh, back then. It was DeLorean, it was Dante Higgins, yeah. it was Dope yeah. Easy. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of great and talented cats, you know, that I was privileged to be around. Mm. And what I always found myself was I was always the youngest in the room. No matter what room I was in, I was always the youngest there. And so I was kind of the fly on the wall. Mm. Like, let me see how these guys move. Let me see how they, you know, position themselves. Mm. Let me see who they're talking to. Mm. How do they come yeah. across? You know, what moves are they making? Yeah. And so to answer your question, yeah, I absorbed a lot of this game mm. uh, from those guys. But also, I got the opportunity to be around legends, like yeah. idols. I was around Paul Wall, Slim Thug. Uh, Bun B, ESG, OG Ron C. These were guys who, I mean, I was around and I would mm. just ask them questions. I would listen to the game that they would give because mm. um, they're obviously a wealth of information. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and just to even, like I said, I looked up to these guys, but mm. for that minute, to be able to look at eye level with them yeah. and them, you know, give me some of that. Bun B told me one of the greatest things back in the day. I'll never forget where I was. I was on West Timer at this old store called Soul Purpose. It was like a t-shirt and like a urban wear kind mm -hmm. of playing. They had all the kind of, you know, like, st st what was it called? Stussy or whatever the brand was back there. A lot of streetwear stuff. And you know what I'm talking about. Talking about. And Bun was in there and Bun said the dopest thing. He said, because I never thought I was the most talented person ever, mm -hmm. right? I still don't. Um, but he said, Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Yeah. Right? Yep. I can believe that. He said yeah. that. And then he said, so you got to network to get work. 
something I actually said to you earlier. Earlier, today. yeah, you just said it. And me. that that came from Bun, right? Mm-hmm. I remember him saying that he didn't know me from Adam, right? This is one of the first or second times I'd ever met him, mm-hmm. but he dropped that on me, and I was like, oh wow, okay. And and so to have that game and be around those people, mm-hmm. yeah, that kind of made me to go back to your question, want to pay it forward. Most definitely. So, um, just to piggyback off your entertainment thing, you are also on the CW on a yeah. on a segment called Spotlight. Mm-hmm. How was that? How was that for you? And how was it like as far as like, I would say your first time doing it, um, not just being in a TV light, but being on a daytime television light because it's different from mm-hmm. it's, it's night and day from you know your reality of wrestling to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a great question, man. You know, like with most things that's happened for me. And I'm nowhere near where I want to be in life. But the things that I've gotten to this point, you know, I, I made it happen, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I didn't wait for opportunity to knock. I went and found the door, and I kicked it kicked down, it right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and with the CW thing, it was, again, I had some relationships over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, Reality Wrestling airs on the network. Yep. I had mm-hmm. some good friends over there who were working there on the sales side. And one day, I just I was doing all these great interviews, and I thought, mm-hmm. man, it would be great to have – these on a, another platform for mm. people to see. And I just shot my shot. You know, I said, hey, what if I were to be the entertainment guy on the station? And then the guy was like, hey, man, let's have a conversation about it. Sit down and have a meeting. Next thing I know, I get the green light. And um, it opened doors. It was different. Mm. What's really cool about the Spotlight segment, I got to give a big shout out to uh, Rachel, Chad, and Angel over there at the CW and the whole team, Mariana. But what's really dope about it is they give me full control. Right, oh, like man. Who, who I want to interview, mm-hmm. what I want to talk about, and I even edit the segment myself. I shoot it myself, I edit it myself, uh, I, and I turn it in. It's all me. And I'm really thankful for that because, one, it gives me the ability to where if I screw up a few times, I have more than one take, right? Like, yeah, we know how great yeah. that can be. Yeah, and yeah. then also, <laughs> but seriously, but I'm serious. Like, yeah. having a take is great because I, I come from wrestling to where – it's a one and done. Yeah. You know? There's no redos. Yeah. And there's been so many times where I call a suplex, you know, a uh, scoop slam, and I wish that I could go back <laughs> and change it right now. You know what I mean, though? No, yeah. dude, I get it. So, yeah. so to have that ability is great. And um, CW has been awesome to me. And I'm so thankful for that. And I saw that as an opportunity uh, to, to do something again for the city. Yeah. Like, man, I can bring these big names onto mm. this station, you know, and I even. I can't say who, but I got an email today, which might be like my biggest interview ever wow. set oh, up man. is coming up. And I'm like, wow. And this, I'm just seeing, like you said at the beginning, the progression. Yeah, the progression. You know, just keep working, never stop, hmm. and seeing it go to different places. Yeah, that's dope, man. Yeah, man, I'm excited. Again, congratulations on that, man. Yeah, I, appreciate man. That. Congratulations. <laughs> I appreciate it. I really am. Um, well, um, one of the things that I just definitely really wanted to talk to you about was um, one of my favorite wrestling shows in Texas. Reality of wrestling. Yes. Oh, man. Uh, first off, we're going to step back way, way back deep into reality of wrestling when it was PWA. Mm-hmm. So I am subscribed on YouTube to reality of wrestling. So I get the older episodes and yeah. everything like that. I came across reality of wrestling in 2016. So I've been definitely been up to par on it. Um, but when I go back and watch some of the older matches, I saw you. In a different spot. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, how, how, how was that, man? I mean, like, how how did you get into that? First, okay, let me step back further. How did you come a part of reality wrestling? It's a great question, man. Um, so, like I said, I was doing a lot in the hip-hop scene, right, in Houston. And um, my group, we went and did an interview one time at this radio station. It was an online station, mm-hmm. kind of podcasting before it really become a medium. Mm-hmm. And the guy and I, the guy who ran the station, I started talking, and he was like, "Hey, you should be. You're like really good on the mic, naturally." Mm-hmm. Um, he's like, "You should have your own show." And so we started talking about developing my own show, so on and so forth. I'm doing a lot of radio. So one day I'm wake. I wake up in the morning, and I do probably what everybody in this room does. What's the first thing you do when you wake up? You grab your phone and you see who needed you while you were sleeping. Right? We want to feel <laughs> yeah. important. Yeah. Who tried to contact me yeah. back then? I was a single lad, so I'm like, you know, did, did anything go down during that time? <laughs> yeah. Did, yeah. Is anybody trying to reach out? Yeah. You know, trying to holler at me? So anyway, jokes. But I, I grab my phone and um, I'm scrolling through, and I'm on Twitter, just checking stuff and. 
something came up from WWE. Uh, you know, lifelong fan at the time. I remember flipping channels and seeing Stone Cold Steve Austin, you know, when I was five years old and becoming enamored with whatever this pro wrestling thing was. But also, as I got more into music, I fell out of wrestling. So I wasn't up to date on it. I probably hadn't watched regularly about mm. four or five years at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, so I see something from WWE and I click on it and then they had something from Booker T. I was like, oh man, Booker T, like, Houston legend, one of the greatest of all time. Yeah. The first wrestling show I ever went to, the main event was Rey Mysterio versus uh, King Booker for the world championship. Oh, right, yeah, right. Yeah. 06, Toyota Center. Yeah. And um, so I was like, oh, I wonder what Booker's up to. So I click his profile, and there just happened to be a tweet that said, looking for um, a commentator for my wrestling show, send an email to this email, right? So I'm not thinking anything about it. I click the email. I'm like, well, what, whatever, let me just... Throw my name uh, in the hat. Yeah, yeah. And so I sent in a resume that I completely lied about. <laughs> so I said, like, I was calling uh, high school football games and basketball games. I'd never done it in life, but we all embellish. Yeah, 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 we all have done it. Yeah, we all have done it. So I sent it in while I was still in bed. I never thought anything about it. Three weeks go by, I get a phone call, and it's from a guy at the time. His name was Paul Cook. And he was like, hey, is this Brad? I said, yeah. He goes, this is Paul Cook from Reality Wrestling. We want to bring you in for an audition. Mm. I'm like, awesome. He's like, can you be here tomorrow? Mm. I said, absolutely. So I drive down to the old gym. It was on Winkler. I think it was 91, 93 Winkler or something like that um, in Monroe in South Houston. And I pull up the first guy I ever meet, Abel Andrew Jackson, mm. um, told me I pulled up in the front space and he came out of the door and i'm thinking oh man here's my first wrestler i'm ever gonna meet he's jacked you know he's uh, looking yeah. great <laughs> he still got the braids at the yeah, time yeah. and he came up to me he's like hey man you can't park there <laughs> <laughs> i was like oh my bad i'm like i got heat already i got yeah, heat already yeah, yeah. i was parked in book spot i didn't realize it okay so anyway i i back out i go do the audition and i'll never forget it was me uh paul cook there was another guy his name was alex and uh, who was auditioning with me. It was down to him and I, apparently. And then uh, Kevin Bernhardt, who's our director. Mm -hmm. um, and they put up an iPad on the table. And they're like, we're going to play a match. And we want you all to do a commentary over it. Okay. So I'd never done this in my life. And they play in the match. And I remember we're going through it. And I'm trying to, like show some personality mm -hmm. and like i made like a donnie and marie osmond joke which is like a really not funny thing at all <laughs> um and i'm like what am i doing and then yeah. at one point I, I didn't even know the names of the moves at that mm -hmm. point and so i did horrendous in my audition like terrible it's the only time i remember or one of the first times i remember walking out of a room and going wow i wasted that opportunity because mm -hmm. i didn't come prepared yeah i just thought i could wing it and get through it and be great and so um, I knew I didn't get it. And then a couple days go by, my phone rings again, and it's uh, Paul Cook. Mm. And he says, hey, our ring announcer for this weekend has strep throat. Would, have you ever done ring announcing? To which I said, absolutely. A hundred yeah, times. Done it all the time. My whole life. That's all this I is nothing done. new. Right? Yeah, this is, I've done it all the time. <laughs> I'd never done it in my life. And... Um, I said, yeah. He goes, okay, great. Come down to the school tomorrow. Booker wants to meet you. Mm -hmm. I said, great. So the next morning I wake up, and I'm sorry for the long story, but I just want to give you no, all the details. No, no, you like this. So the next morning I wake up, I go to the mirror, you know, to brush my teeth, and I notice something's off, right? I notice when I look in the mirror, half of my face is frozen, won't move. I had Bell's palsy, the same stuff Jim Ross had, mm -hmm. right? Uh, same stuff Young Jeezy had, mm -hmm. Bell's palsy. Half my face is paralyzed. I'm 19 years old at the time. I have no idea what's going on. But I, all I know is I have a meeting with Booker T this evening, and I can't screw this up, right? So I go into the meeting. I go to the doctor. They tell me what to do. And um, I go into the meeting. But mind you, I have no emotion in my face. I mm. can't move it. Man. And I, I just remember, this is the only reason I tell the story, is Booker has this fan on his desk. Because mm. that old gym was hot. And it was like a rotating fan. And it's blowing on the side of my face that I cannot control. Mm. So for anybody who's never had Bell's palsy before, you can't blink your eye. So your mm. eye gets real dry, mm. especially when there's a fan blowing in it. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. And so Booker's talking to me. He's like, hey, you know, kid, you know, we really appreciate you coming in. You know, I just want to tell you this 
there's not a lot of money at this level. There's a lot of opportunity, but if you have passion, you know, you can make it happen. Yeah. And he's saying this like really kind of inspirational speech. Yeah. And I'm you like, can't. oh my God, I'm about to cry. It's going to look like I'm crying because <laughs> this fan's blowing yeah. in my eye. The fan blows in my eye. All of a sudden, these tears start <laughs> streaming down my face. <laughs> I'm like, I look like such a wimp in front of this mountain of a man. You know, Booker. Because Booker's like got his tank top on. Yeah. He's looking jacked. You know, and then uh, they gave me the opportunity, man. And I remember going out there uh, the first time, never doing ring announcing before. In my mind, just saying, I want to sound like Michael mm. Buffer or Bruce Buffer. That's all I could think about. And um, I did the first night. I was just supposed to be a fill-in. I was never supposed to go back again. That was supposed to be a one and done. And then Booker called me aside that night and said, hey, kid, you got a lot of talent. Mm. Um, we want to keep you around. Be here next month. And then I showed up the next month, and I was mm. still doing the ring announcing. You know, they fired the other ring announcer. I took her role. You know, I hope she's doing well, by the way. No heat. Uh, <laughs> no shade. <laughs> no shade. And um, a couple years went by, and then he was like, I want you to be the commentator. And mm. it, it was just a random day. He was like, you're the commentator now. Man. Again, never done it before. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. that's where I found myself. Yeah. Man, by that time when you start commentating, did you think you kind of developed more of a skill to actually perform that kind of duty? No. No, no. I actually, I remember my first commentary, uh, you know, run of matches. I knew that they were bad. <laughs> it's one of those things yeah. where, like, as you're doing it, you're like, wow, this is awful. Yeah. Like, yeah. I am not doing good at this yeah. at all. <laughs> and then I remember we took a break, mm. and um, Booker said, just go out there and be yourself, kid. Like, mm. don't think about being an announcer. Just be yourself, you know? And I remember being myself, and, and it felt more natural. Yeah. And then um, I felt like, you know, it took another couple of years before I felt good about it. Mm. And I think I've only been at good since then. I don't feel like I've gotten to the next gear still at this moment. Okay. I feel like there's still another gear that I need to get to. Um, but I'm working toward it every day. Um, is, there, is there any uh, commentary inspirations that, that help you along the way? I mean, yeah. I mean, they're the obvious ones. Because when I first started, I was doing color commentary. Mm. So I was more the, like the analyst and not so much play-by-play. -play. So I mm. looked at a lot of... Growing up, it was Jim Ross and Jerry the King Lawler, Jerry King so I liked Lawler. Jerry a lot. Yeah. I always liked Jesse Ventura, Bobby Heenan, um, those kind of guys. People who just showed off their personality. Yeah. So I would look for you know ways to obviously always get the talent over because that's the first thing. You know, if people leave saying, oh, the commentary was so good, mm -hmm. then I actually didn't do my job. They should say, oh, wow, man, that story they told in the ring was so great yeah. you know, yeah. that night. I want you to leave with that. I'm just giving you the lyrics to their music, mm. right? But I want you to remember the music. I want that melody to be in your head when you leave. So if everyone, so I, but I did look for moments to bring the entertainment side of it. Mm. Cause you know, I've been performing on stages since I was 17. Mm. So I knew how, even when the crowd wasn't right in front of me, they were watching on TV. Mm. I knew when I could hit a line, hit something that's going to make somebody chuckle that they might remember that they might think is funny. I would yeah. look for those moments. And that's why I really like Jesse, who's really good at it. And Bobby. Yeah. yeah, and like we, you know, we all go to the road shows, and we be, we see you a lot, and we actually <laughs> like, you know, like the average fan at home watching TV, they think, oh, they just talking. No, it's a whole lot that comes <laughs> mm -hmm. behind that, and I can also say, like speaking for myself, um, one of my life dreams as a wrestling fan was, I had ref my first match. Oh, nice! And with no training whatsoever, <laughs> I got like a fifteen minute thing. It was a charity event. It wasn't mm -hmm. like you know, it was a charity event giving back to the kids. And um, in those 15 minutes of me learning, I learned about the horseshoe, <laughs> the horseshoe, uh -huh. and, you know, the different angles of the cameras mm -hmm. and making sure that people, you know, get the good angles of the uh, the wrestlers and you kind of like telling their story as a ref and mm -hmm. also the communication yeah. and everything like that. And just don't think the referee just in there counting one, two. That oh, is some, no. bro, that's, that that's is, work, that brother. That is some work. Work. Oh yeah, that's work. So I'm really, here too. Hey, yeah. hey, yeah. Giving I, you, I give them the utmost respect. When I left out that, when I left out that the, the ring that day, I did like I think I did three matches that day. <sighs> Pressure. Oh yeah, <laughs> you, you feel it. Oh, yeah, you, yeah. So so yeah. Hey, again, doing commentary, yeah. we give you your flowers, man. <laughs> yeah, we give, I appreciate we give it. you the flowers. Man. I do have one question though. Yeah. It's a little bit outside. How was it? Because I saw you at uh, Last Stand getting the ring. How was that? Well, let me say this first and foremost, mm. and I mean this sincerely. 
Um, I always have had a large amount of appreciation and respect for the performers who go out there mm-hmm. and risk life and limb for our entertainment. And I never had any inkling or inclination, want or desire to go out and do it. <laughs> um, uh, and my respect level only quadrupled after mm-hmm. participating in the limited capacity that I did. I, um, it was again, what a lot of people don't know, um, and I'm not going to go too behind the scenes, but, but, you know, Kevin Bernhardt is, you know, really the lifeblood of reality of wrestling Mm -hmm. comes up with so much of what you see from a production standpoint, Mm -hmm. what happens in the ring. Uh, obviously Booker's influence is, is, is always present Mm -hmm. and there and the show would not operate without him. Um, and I've had the privilege of getting to sit in that room for the past however many years, 11 years, while a lot of these decisions are made. Mm. And when you're around people, great wrestling minds like that, you're only going to learn from it. And so I've been able to pitch ideas, come up with storylines, um, things of that nature, finishes and things like that. So the last stand, the actual rumble was actually my, ri- the original one was my idea. I pitched it for years. Can we do a Royal Rumble? Can we do a Royal Rumble? Mm. Can we do a Royal Rumble? I really want to do a Royal Rumble. Can we do a Royal Rumble? And finally they gave us the green light, whatever that was three or four years ago, for this year, um, I remember Kevin and I having some conversation, and I don't know if I suggested it. I don't think it was me. I think it was Kevin, <laughs> but I can't remember. And said, well, hey, what if you're one of the surprise entrants? Because we had somebody else who was going to come in, and then they couldn't make it scheduling-wise. It was going to be a surprise. Mm-hmm. We had another person who was going to come in. They got hurt that week, uh, right? So uh, it was like, man, who are we going to have as this like kind of surprise mm-hmm. part of the match? And then so my name got thrown out there, and we kind of went to Booker about it. Booker was like, hey, man, I don't know. Like, <laughs> like, you sure about this? I don't know, kid. And then uh, Booker happened to actually not be there that night, and I mm. remember calling him, and he goes, hey, it's all you. You know, If you want to do it, if you feel yeah. comfortable, go ahead and do it. And so I remember um, texting my wife and saying, hey, you should come to the show tonight. I didn't tell her why. Mm-hmm. I didn't say what was going to happen. I said, you should just come to the show tonight. And um, I remember sitting there calling the match, and seeing each number go by and going, okay, <laughs> I know what number I am. Yeah. You know, this is getting a little too close for comfort here. Because, you know, the heart really starts yeah. going. Pumping, yeah. This is, again, if we're one. just doing, if I'm doing ring announcing, or I'm hosting a show, mm-hmm. or I'm performing live on stage, what, what, no butterflies. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just I'm ready to get out there. This was like, I've never done this before. You get one take. Yep. You can't screw it up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you got to listen out there. You've got a live audience you have to think about. You've got TV cameras you got to think mm. about, as you were talking about a minute ago. And so I remember walking to the ring thinking, what in good God's name <laughs> did I agree to? Right? <laughs> and, 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 and mind you, people think, you can think whatever you want about wrestling. These uh, performers at Reality of Wrestling are so highly trained and skilled. Mm. They don't gonna, they're not going to go and chore- choreograph their, you know, everything, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. They're going to go out there and they're going to perform and they're going to do it at a high level. And um, so you're talking about somebody with no experience, no training, mm-hmm. just uh, Q was in the ring with me. This man right here, you know, Q. And I got to give him so much props, mm-hmm. so much respect for holding my hand through that whole thing, yeah. right? Because he did it all. I did nothing. He took care um, of you out there. 100%. And I went out there, and I remember we, you know, we, we may have walked through a little bit of something beforehand, and I remember going out there, and he, he was so awesome. And I remember he hits me with the cue cutter. Yeah. And yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm laying there on the mat <laughs> thinking, I'm all right. Okay, I'm good. Okay, <laughs> everything's cool. And then I remember him picking me up on his shoulders, and I remember thinking, "This is really high, you know." <laughs> like, this is really high, you know. Yeah. And then they put me on the uh, apron, and um, and I and I, you know, get knocked off, and I'm laying there, and I was only in the ring for the whole thing, maybe forty seconds, mm-hmm. maybe, yeah. right? And I'm laying there, I'm sweating profusely, I'm huffing and puffing. And then I get up to walk to the back, and my leg is killing me. Like, oh. it hurts. I'm limping. Like, legitimately. Yeah. No no BS. I'm limping to the back. I don't know what happened, right? And the next morning, I could barely move my leg. Oh. 100%. I'm not making this up. I'm limping oh. around my house. I had to go get, like, bombs and baths and do all <laughs> kinds of stuff, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. just to feel better. And, again, I'm glad that I had that experience because it gives me – 
like I said, even more respect for what those guys and, and girls go out there and do. Yeah. Um, I like that I was able to check it off my bucket list at 30 when I'm still able-bodied enough to recover yeah. from it. Yeah. Um, but I, I have no desire to ever do that again. Yeah. But I had my moment in the sun. And, mm. and that's something no one could ever take away from me. I entered the last day of Rumble. I did it once. It was fun. It was memorable. We're talking about it on a podcast oh, yeah. seven, eight, nine months later. Yeah. So uh, obviously it did its job. It did. Um, but it was, it, was, it was an opportunity that, yeah, I couldn't pass up, but I probably wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't do it do again. It. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, uh, yeah, because we was told, you, I, think, I think you put it in the group chat. With, mm -hmm. uh, I had yeah. watched, I was like, I remember that. I remember <laughs> well, that. I was cutter, like, I can't believe he took the cue cutter. Yeah. Yeah. Took the Q cutter. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. But Q's awesome, man. Oh, yeah. He, I mean, and, and, and I can't preach enough about the training at Reality of Wrestling. There's a, there's a lot of schools. Yeah. Right? There's mm -hmm. a lot of schools. But I'll tell you, the legends who've walked through that door, whether that be Mark Henry, Shelton Benjamin, The mm -hmm. Undertaker, uh, Bruce Pritchard, so many people walk through that door. Who always preach to our talent, to me, and to anybody who listen, mm. y'all don't realize how special this is. No one else has this. No one else has, one, their own facility. Yeah. yeah. Their own arena. Yeah. A full workout gym. Yeah. Top-notch trainers. Oh, and you know what no other school in the world has? A two-time Hall, Hall of Famer. Of Famer. Exactly. A yeah. six-time world heavyweight champion. Yeah. The most decorated professional wrestler in the history of the industry. Mm -hmm. No one else has that. This guy worked for the world title at WrestleMania. He faced Triple H, The Undertaker, Ric Flair, had AJ a, Styles, The Rock. Epic, had an epic... Um, what was that? Grocery epic story storyline with Stone Cold. Yeah. Yes. How many people? Have, how many yeah. people can you hey, say? I still say that? go back yeah. and watch that. Man. Yeah. It's incredible. It's real. And yeah. and a guy who, by the way, has not only been there and done that, but all of his peers talk about him in the mm -hmm. best of light. He's yeah. got the respect yeah. of everybody in the industry. Mm -hmm. And um and, and Booker was great on both sides. Right? He was great. In the ring, he was great on the mic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He was great as a baby. He was great as a heel. Yep. Yeah. He could did it. He did it in WCW. He did it in the Global Wrestling Federation. Yeah. He did it in WWE. He did it in TNA. Yeah. Yeah. And he did it in reality wrestling. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. Not 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 there's no one else out there like that. And I will say this, you know, there's probably a handful of people in my life who've had a tremendous impact and done good by me when they had no reason to do so. Mm. Uh, and Booker T, uh, Booker T Huffman yeah. Jr. Um, is, is, is one of the most incredible individuals that's ever come into my life. I think uh, the good Lord above that I saw that tweet that one day yeah, because yeah. he has changed my life in more ways than he will ever know. Mm. And he's changed so many of the talent's lives. Yeah, I'm not yeah. special. Everybody's walked through that door who's actually opened their ears, checked their ego, mm. and listened to what this man had to say. He has made their lives better for being around him. And he only does it out of the kindness of his heart. He got the ultimate opportunity to make something of himself in this life, and he did that. Yeah. And all he wants to do is create opportunities for other people. Yeah. And he's done that for me. He's done that for Promise. He's done that for Q. He's done yeah. that for Abel, for Kevin, for yeah. anybody y'all have had in these seats who've had the ability and the privilege to sit under the learning tree and receive his expert tutelage. Yeah. He's the most incredible person, one of the most incredible people I've ever met in my life. And um, you know, I'm thankful for that opportunity. Yeah, see, on our first episode, we had, we actually had what we call the highlight of the week. And Reality of Wrestling was our highlight of the week. Mm -hmm. And we pretty much were just saying, like, it's so much talent at Reality of Wrestling. Mm -hmm. Not only that, we talked about the training that they have, the facility and everything yeah. that you mentioned. And we also was talking about the fact that a lot of people from Roe is getting these big opportunities at other at, at, at the bigger companies, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's crazy to see uh, Roxanne. It's crazy <laughs> yeah. to see AQA. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. We just seen B, and that's we just, just seen BK we, the other. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, seeing Brian mm -hmm. Keith on there. Pro Page, Promise yeah. Braxton was on uh, Ring the, of Honor. The Ring, Ring of Honor. Honor. Yeah. Um, Athena. Yeah, another reality yeah. wrestling. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yep. Athena. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and um, I'm trying to I'm trying to think, man. I'm I'm getting excited about it because it's just awesome to see this. I I, I actually go to the road show. I see them. I'm mm -hmm. fans of them. To see them on TV, I mean, it's crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, the list goes on and on of the people who walk through the door. I mean, even starting with, 
you know, Jimmy and Jay Uso yeah. started at Reality Wrestling. Yeah. And and what's so cool is that their dad, Rikishi, props to the Hall of Famer, you know, was like, Hey, you gotta go to book school. Yeah. <laughs> That's where you're gonna learn from. Yeah. You know, you gotta learn from him. And just to have that respect of this Rikishi could have taught his sons. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure he did yeah. to a large extent. Yeah. Yeah. But to say like, hey, your finishing school has to be under book. Mm-hmm. Like that's where you got to go. Yeah. Because if you can make it at reality of wrestling, you can make it anywhere in the world. Mm-hmm. We, we train you from the ground up, you know, putting the ring together, mm-hmm. helping with production, helping with lighting, knowing your cues, um, um, doing it in a television environment, working mm-hmm. television style, taking direction yeah. from Booker, who you might have this whole idea yeah. for your match, and I've seen it. And they go in, and then Booker goes, yeah, we're not doing that. You know, yeah. this is how you're going to do it. And, I'll mm-hmm. let, and let me tell you why. Yeah, and then he'll explain why. Mm. So if you can make it there, man, you can make it anywhere. Mm. You know, and 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 to me, it's um, it's awesome, like you said, to see all the talent yes. that come by. You know, especially Rock, Roxy. I remember she was like 15 years old when mm. I first met her. Yeah, and I was uh, down at NXT not too long ago, a couple months ago, with Book, mm. and just I saw her walk by, and I almost didn't even recognize her. You know what I mean? Mm. She becomes such a, a, a yeah. young, grown woman um, who's so confident in her craft. And um, all all of what you see with her um, comes from two things, her hard work, determination, and will, mm. and from what she learned under Booker T at Reality Wrestling and, and from Ryan Davidson yeah. and from Gino Medina mm. and from Mysterious Q and from all the people who are there. Yeah. Uh, I forgot to miss Gino because he was on MLW. Yeah, Gino I was, MLW. I was a proud moment for yeah. him. No, so I was, I was real happy. Gino's so that, great, man. man. Yeah. Great so, to, guy. so to piggyback off that, you you can see it in promise too. Oh, yeah. Oh, from, yeah, from 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 from, <laughs> from from back from back in the yeah. day when when her and Roxy were actually wrestling in, in the ring together. From mm-hmm. now, you can tell they're two totally different mm-hmm. wrestlers from then in that segment. Yeah, promise is one of the most skilled professional wrestlers I've ever seen in my life. I've got so much love for that girl. She knows this. But when I saw her really come into her own, I remember, I don't know if I was talking to Booker or Kevin and going, man, you don't realize how great Promise is? And everyone was like, yeah, I know. She's really good. Yeah, she? yeah. And uh, I want the world for her. I want the world for her. You know, and, and I think that um, she's doing everything right. And and right now it's just a matter of time. Yeah. yeah. That time was coming. Yeah, that's oh, time, definitely, time was coming. Definitely coming. And like definitely. When, when we saw her on uh, Ring of Honor, and I was just like, wow, this is this is promise, you mm-hmm. know. Like I felt like, I mean, in a way, I'm like, she, I see a reality of wrestling. I feel like I'm connected to her in some yeah. kind of way. I'm like, come on, promise, yeah. man. You know, it's anybody from that hometown yeah, that you man. know that scene that you like fly depth. They know, was used on, to. I was happy for yeah. those guys, man. That was that was pretty dope. Yeah. You know, it's always great to see. You know, I mean, it's great to see people who have stayed consistent, stayed mm. on the grind. You know, not allow because here's the thing, guys. I mean, this this whole entertainment thing, and y'all gonna experience it if you haven't already to a mm-hmm. certain extent. Sometimes you you believe your own press clippings a little bit, right? You mm-hmm. believe when pe- everybody tells you how great you are, you start to be like, yeah, you know what? I am pretty good. And sometimes if you let that creep into you too much, you go the wrong way with yeah. it. Mm-hmm. You think that oh, I mm-hmm. figured it out. You know, I've learned it, and I've been in this industry with reality wrestling for eleven years. Eleven years. Mm-hmm. Eleven years. That's a long God, time. Man, I'm getting old, bro. Um, <laughs> but, 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 but I never think that I know more than the people around me, mm. right? You know, we were talking about American Gangster before the, uh, before the sound roll. Yeah. And what did Denzel say in that one? The loudest one in the room is the weakest one in the, the room. The weakest one yep. in the room. Right? Yep. So I still, even with the knowledge that I have, and trust me, I know this game. I get it. I'm there. I experience it. I live it. I understand it at a very deep level. But I still never think that I know more than the people who came before me and the people mm-hmm. around me. Yeah. So I find myself, e- even to this day, sitting back and listening and asking questions still, right? And if I can do that, uh, a, a, a brand new trainee, someone who's been there for one year, someone who's been there for five years, someone who's been wrestling for 10 years, they should have that same mentality, yeah, right? Yeah. We all can agree that Booker was a phenomenal professional wrestler in WCW. Yeah. We can all agree with that. He was a world champion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, Harlem Heat, one of the great tag teams yeah. ever. Yeah. He still said, when I went to WWE, I checked my ego at the door and mm-hmm. I listened to the guys there. And I and I and he became so much better. 
yeah, in his yeah. WWE run yeah, yeah. because he was listening to guys like The Undertaker. He was listening to the John Laurinaitis's who were producing matches, to the Bruce Pritchards, to the Pat Pattersons, to the Vince McMahons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, he was listening. He's like, I'm not going to think that I know better just because I made it over there. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, I mean, that's always my biggest thing to talent that comes in, even if they've been wrestling for 10 years on the indies. Mm-hmm. Hey, man, listen to what Booker says. Listen to what yeah. the trainers say. They know what they're talking about. The Ryan Davisons, the Kevin Barnharts. Yeah. They get it. And we're not going to tell you something at Reality Wrestling to make you worse. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. why would we yeah. do that? Yeah. You're yeah. representing us. Yeah, yeah. we want to make you yeah. better. So if anybody has ever told, and I've given tips to some guys, you know, mm. about certain things that I see, and it's never meant as a knock, as a diss, mm. as a dig. It's always meant to, hey, man, I see this, or hey, girl, I see this, and this, I think, can help you get to the next level. This is my advice, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and you got, and you got to be on your own to filter out what's good and what's bad. Mm-hmm. But the thing at reality wrestling is we're always trying to make you better. Yeah. And we're all yeah. in our locker room. We look out for each other, which is something that's so rare in any industry, yeah. especially in that of professional wrestling, which is, you know, Hey man, we're all looking out for ourselves in a lot of perspectives, especially when you're an indie guy mm-hmm. working town to town, working promotion to promotion. But at reality wrestling, we always look out for everybody. Yeah. So like, that's what I always tell people like, just listen up, man. Like mm-hmm. you're gonna learn, you're gonna get the game. Yeah, and then like the evolution of reality wrestling. Like again, it was PWA mm-hmm. now, and then you got to think about it. You know, we get these 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 crazy shows and these these pay per views on YouTube. They have over seven hundred thousand subscribers. Yeah, people are tuned in. I mean, like that is great. I mean, yeah. that's hard. That that that's hard. I, and I yeah. try to, and I actually did this on purpose. I looked at other wrestling promotions, and though the numbers is, is totally it's it's yeah. nobody it's a landslide. Nobody, yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. landslide. This and, is and the I thing. Think it's, that's that's crazy, bro. That Texas independent wrestling scene is probably like one of the most biggest mm-hmm. right now. I mean, just with every promotion they have coming out of Texas, from here to San Antonio to Beaumont, Dallas. any place in between, Dallas is it's so much wrestling in Texas is. It's really incredible. But right. to flex our muscle for just a second, a lot of great. And and mm-hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm serious. This is not a knock to anybody else. And I would never uh, take a shot at any other company because there are a lot of great schools, a lot of great mm-hmm. promotions. Everyone should work as much as they can to get better. Uh, but there is only one reality of wrestling. Yes. Right? Yes. Indeed. There's only yeah, one sure. with 700,000. Sure. There's only one with Booker T. Yeah. There's only one that if you really want to make it to the next level yeah. and you're not at reality of wrestling and you're in this state, mm-hmm. I'm not really sure what your plan is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, okay, if you want to go to WWE, where are they going to send you first? NXT, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Who happens to be the commentator on <laughs> NXT right now? <laughs> Booker. Who, Booker. Who's in the uh, meetings yeah. with Sean and uh, Shawn Michaels and Matt Bloom Booker. and all the people over there? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. It's Booker. He, <laughs> he actually, tra- he actually yeah. trains over there for what I read. Yeah, yeah. Booker's done some guest training sessions. We have NXT talent coming down yep. to yeah. our school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Speaking of that, I just want to gonna throw you a shout out. This weekend, make sure you're uh, reality of wrestling. We have Axiom and uh, Charlie Dempsey coming mm-hmm. in. Yeah. NXT yeah. Showcase. And you got to think about it, man. No one else in the country has that. Nobody. Yeah, Nobody. Nobody. Not just the state. Not just the city. No one else in the country has that. And, it, and then it's like everybody that we have interviewed, they have nothing but great things to say about Book, no. um, Ryan Davison, mm-hmm. um, Mysterious Q, and just the locker room in general. Like they really talk about how family oriented everything is and how everybody's just getting better. Mm-hmm. And like I said, if I was a wrestler, wanted to be a wrestler, I would I would go to reality wrestling too. Yeah. The blueprint, and because we interview some of the uh, some of the intermediate guys, you know, we oh, we talk to some of the in- mm-hmm. intermediate guys. Like for example, the Rocket. Josiah. Yeah, Josiah. We, What's up, Josiah? I, yeah. I, I, I was talking guy. to him. I was talking to him before he even made his debut in reality wrestling, yeah. and I immediately saw his gift. And like we was talking about um, his his move set, and I was seeing like how he, you could tell that he really studies the game. He's listening mm-hmm. to his trainers because his sidekick is is very textbook. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's very precise. And I was like, dude. That really caught my eye. Like, it really did. And not, and not only that, it's his style. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I feel like, I mean, of course, you know, nobody can necessarily, like, mimic it or, or what's the word I'm trying to say? Like, it, I'm going to just say it's unique. It's, mm-hmm. it's yeah. unique. But you can tell that it was brought up in that school. Yeah. It, you could tell it was brought into reality wrestling. Yeah. I, I mean, 
I mean, there's nothing else you can really say. Like you said, it's yeah, only one there, reality. There, there was another man that did a sidekick. There was another wrestler that did yeah, a sidekick. Yeah, but he did all right. He's all right. He did all right for himself. <laughs> yeah. He did all right for himself. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But yeah, there's only one, man. It's yeah. only one. Yeah. So I will get into uh, the Hall of Fame podcast. Yeah, yeah. we, we got to talk about that. We, we definitely got to talk, talk about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, ESPN. Um, how did it start? Like just, just the, the ground floor level of it. Man, again, this is one of those crazy things. So I was telling you before, I did like a lot of online radio. I was doing mm -hmm. my own podcast since 2012 or whatever it was. And um, Booker, there was a, a local station, Sports Radio 610, shout out to them. There was a producer over there, PD at the time. His name was Ryan McCredden, and he was a big wrestling fan. He wanted to give Booker a show on the station. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so he gives him a show on the station. It was just an hour on Saturday nights. He put him with a good friend of mine, Patrick Creighton. And um, I was listening to the show, and... You know, it was called Heated Conversations, and I was listening in, and Booker would call me afterward. And mm -hmm. I don't, I honestly don't even understand how Booker and I got to that part of our, like, relationship, mm -hmm. I guess, where he would call me for, hey, how did I sound on the show? I guess because I was like, I did radio, and so he thought that maybe I had some insight. Yeah. But he called me, and we would talk about it. And then eventually, I re I'll never forget it. It was Valentine's Day 2016 or 2015, one of the two, and Booker called me and said, hey, ma'am. Um, what are you doing tonight? Well, it's Valentine's Day book. I'm going to go out with my girl. We're going to celebrate Mike's kid's birthday. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're going to, you know, we're going to have a You know, and, uh, yeah. and um, he was like, well, hey, man, you know, I got the radio show tonight. Um, I wanted to know if you wanted to come on it and just be uh, my social media guy. Mm -hmm. So he wanted me to, like, read tweets that he would get in, like, for questions. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I was like, yeah, you know. Uh, Pharaoh, my wife, at the, uh, who's my wife now, my girlfriend at the time, I knew she would understand. Um, so I went in to do it that mm -hmm. night, and um, and I was just supposed to do that, and then it morphed into, hey, Brad, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. and I'll never forget, we had a guest on the line, and the guest actually said a curse word, and then we're on the live radio, so they dropped the guest. Mm -hmm. And so that's when Booker pivots me. He's like, well, Brad, what do you think? And I'm like, ooh, I'm not ready for that. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what I think. But I remember it was live radio, and he gave me that shot, and that's when it kind of evolved into a, a co-hosting position. Mm. And then um, we left that station because we got an opportunity with ESPN 97.5, 92.5, mm. and we went over there, and we changed the name of the show to the Hall of Fame. And it just, it just was one of those things, man, to where we, for some reason, even though we have nothing really in common when you look at it at the surface, mm. right? You have a guy who's a, a professional athlete, you know, uh, much older than I am, way older than I am. No, I'm just kidding. Bro. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> he can kill me. Um, no, I'm just playing with him. No, but someone who's older than I were from different generations, different backgrounds, grew up in different neighborhoods, obviously mm -hmm. look different, different cultures, everything. But for some reason, we have this natural rapport with one another. Mm -hmm. I don't, I can't explain it. I can't explain it at all. But w the chemistry was just there. And so that's where the Hall of Fame podcast was born. And, um, you know, and it, it's, it's taken off. Yeah. It's definitely taken off. And it's something that, again, I pinch myself every so often um, when I'm, I'm talking to Booker T., about wrestling yeah, twice hey, a week. It's crazy. Hey, man. It's, yeah. it's wild, man. Yeah, it yeah. really is. It's wild, especially when we have, like, some interviews on, and I'm like, wow, we're talking to so-and-so on the show. We're talking mm. to Randy Orton tonight, yeah, or we're yeah. talking to whomever, Stone Cold Steve Austin. What? Yeah, yeah. that's cool. That, that is real cool. Yeah, it's it's been a blessing, man. And again, he had no reason to call me. Not at all. He, had, he didn't need me, right? I, at least in my mind, he didn't. But he... Gave me that opportunity. Yeah. And that has that that door has led to so many mm -hmm. other ones that have mm -hmm. opened for me just because he thought to call me. He could have called anybody. You know this man's got a Rolodex. Yeah. <laughs> you know he's yeah. got everybody's yeah. number. Yeah. You know yeah. he knows everybody. Yeah. yeah. And anyone would have said yes to him. Right? But he, mm -hmm. he, he gave me that shot. And, um, and, again, that's another reason I'm just eternally grateful. Yeah. That, I mean, that's the biggest thing, man. Is giving it up for the people who give you those, those shots and give you that opportunity and pave the way. Um, and so, you know, he he passed me the rock and he expect me to, you know, he was like, I'm like Steve Kerr. You know, he was Jordan passing Steve Kerr yeah. the ball. Steve, you better make shoot this the shot, man. You better shoot it. You know, you better shoot it and make it, man. Yeah. And uh, it's a make or miss world, right? Just like the yeah. NBA is a make or miss league. Yeah. So I knew if I didn't show and prove, I wouldn't be on there long. Yeah. Um, but just having that opportunity, man, it means it means everything. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, I, it's it's real cool seeing y'all together, and I've been seeing y'all together for years now. So it's like if you see book, you see Brad, Brad, Brad yeah. you know Brad, <laughs> Brad somewhere. You know. yeah. Speaking yeah. of which, Brad, do you have a favorite like Booker T moment or a time you was with him that just really stuck out to you? Oh man, you know, there's probably too many. There's some stories that I actually can't tell that are okay. my favorite. <laughs> he would kill me if I said them. Um, but no, you know what? Anytime, honestly, I see him with the talent. Honestly, and I mean that. When I see him call in a talent in his office and I just sit there and listen to the game that he gives mm. and how, hey, this is why we're not doing it that way. Let me explain it to you. And then to see those light bulbs go off in their head, the light bulb goes off in my mm. head. I remember pitching this idea to Booker and being like, man, this is how we're going to do it. This would be great. Mm. And he was like, no. I'm like, wait, <laughs> why? I don't get it. This is the yeah. best angle ever that's ever yeah. been written in the history of wrestling. What are you talking about, boy? Yeah. And, um, and he goes, no, this is how we're going to do it. And I disagreed with him. Mm. It was one of the first times I, st I, I was like, no, Book, I think we should. And we got into it a little bit. Mm. And, we, you know, obviously he had final say. And we went with what he said. And a couple months go by, and I call him one day and go, hey, Book, you remember that angle about such and such and such and such? He goes like, yeah. I am go, yeah, you were right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> it clicked in my head. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah you were right. <laughs> you were right. Yeah. But as far as, like, one particular favorite thing, mm. not that I can think of, man, um, but it want, that I can say. But there's just been so many. Yeah. I've been around the guy, like I said, yeah. 11 years. Yes, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's a, long, that's that's a lot of memories. There's a lot of moments. Yeah. You know, but I, I can't tell you this one. And this didn't involve me, but it did. Um, we're all fan of wrestling podcasts, right? Yeah. And, you know, one of the best ones, one of the first ones was the Steve Austin show. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was religiously listen to Steve Austin. He's the reason I became a fan. When mm -hmm. I saw this guy flipping the finger and mm -hmm. crashing beers together when I was five, for some reason that appealed to me. He's a real role model. Yeah, yeah, real <laughs> role model, man. <laughs> Be out Texas, yeah. you know, there's that Texas, Texas connection. Yeah. I remember I had these like little treetop apple juices that I would buy at the grocery store and I'd crack them open. And oh yeah, everybody <laughs> did that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody did that. Um, <laughs> so he had Booker on and obviously I'm going to listen, right? Yeah. And then I, I'm driving on 45 South heading home. And <laughs> he goes, uh, Steve Austin goes, so how'd you link up with your partner, Brad Gilmore? And I go, whoa, mm. this is crazy. Yeah. Steve Austin, the guy who the reason I became a wrestling fan is asking Booker T, you know, the guy who gave me a shot in the mm. wrestling business about me. Yo, that's crazy. Yeah, that was man. such an imposter syndrome, brother. Like I had to rewind it a couple times. Be like, am I <laughs> wow. hearing this or am I imagining this? Yeah, that's you know, crazy. moments like that. Is it, it those are big fans? Like, we just had, and you, you were there, we had Bun B on the podcast. Mm -hmm. And to be sitting there, my two biggest passions my whole life have been hip hop and wrestling. So, to be sitting in Bun B's establishment, Trill Burgers, being the first podcast he allowed to come in there, the first one, mm -hmm. he said he got many calls. He told them all no. He mm -hmm. let us in first, right? And sitting there and talking to him and Booker T at the same time. I'm still a fan, y'all. Mind blowing. Yeah. Like I'm still yeah. a fan. Yeah. Mind blowing. After Fair it enough. was over, I took the microphone that I just bought for this interview, yeah. and I had a silver sharpie, and I'm like, "Hey, book, bun, can y'all sign this? Like, yeah. I got to remember this. <laughs> this is a moment yeah. for That's me, yeah. you know? Because to me, like, and I asked Bun about it. International Players Anthem, I think, is the greatest rap song ever recorded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to be able to sit there, and then you know, Booker go, "I know you're thinking, where'd I get this kid from?" Is what he said to Bun. And then mm. Bun goes, "Oh no, I've seen Brad. I get down with Brad. You know, I'm like, yeah, this yeah. is." This is wild. wild. Yeah. What is going on? How did I get here? <laughs> so the what is life? The yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. What is life? Dream, man. It's <laughs> <laughs> dream, man. Yeah. man. It's wild. Yeah. Um, and, and to have these moments, that's what I said. I'm still a fan. Yeah. You know, I mean, to to see these things, to be there, to sit there at the Hall of Fame uh, induction ceremony and see these guys get inducted and, and, oh, and get to meet them. You know, I, there? That's I crazy. yeah, I've got to be at two of them. The one in yeah. uh, New Orleans, I was like right behind Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan and the Bellas and John oh, Cena. I was man. like, literally, you could, my neck made it on WrestleMania, by the way. Y'all can see, <laughs> y'all ever see a really handsome neck? That was me, man. Go back and watch. You know, my neck made it on WrestleMania. And then I was there when Booker got inducted with Harlem Heat mm, um, oh, that okay. night. And that was a really special moment. And I was mm. there, with, oh, I went to another one. I was there when Charmel was yeah. inducted as well, yeah. um, which was another great moment. And by the way, if you ever, Charmel's story, we always talk about Booker's. Mm. Booker's is an incredible story. Charmel's story is inc 
is insane. Mm. When you sit and you find out her origins from Gary, Indiana, Miss Black America in 92, mm -hmm. you know, uh, went to Spelman, graduated with a degree with honors in mathematics. Wow. Mm. Toured with mm -hmm. James Brown yeah, as a backup America. dancer. Yeah, dancing, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then she finds herself in a wrestling hall of fame. She's an inspiration too. Because yeah. yeah. that woman's not only run a business, because she does all the business side of reality wrestling. That's yeah. what a lot of people don't know. You know, where Booker's the idea man, Charmel is a business, business. mind. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Right? And I got to give her flowers because she's done that at the same time as raising kids, yeah. you know, and, and, and doing it all. Man, psh, inspiration, too. Behind mm. every man is a strong woman. That's what they oh, tell brother. you. Really? We all know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we all know that. <laughs> know that. You know, but, but Charmel, in these stories, you know, uh, she needs to get her flowers, too. And then, yeah. you know, being an actress, she's done a lot of stuff, you know, recently, too, on a lot of movies and shows that have come out mm. and going down there. And she'll teach a promo class. And, and get in there. And that's, again, what sets us apart. You know, you have these people from all sectors of entertainment who've lived it, who've been in that experience. And um, Charmel, I just got to give her her flowers. You know, she doesn't get yeah. enough love. And she, 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 without her, again, like the whole thing falls apart. The whole thing falls apart without Charmel. Um, so, yeah, I just had to give had to give the queen yeah, her flowers. Yeah, we, we give her flowers. We all, yeah, all got to bow. The all queen. Bow. All hell, Queen Charmel. All, all hell, Queen Charmel. All, all hell, bow. Yeah. Yes, I better bow. I recognize. Take the lead. Brad, before we get out of here, we want to hit you with a quick speed round right quick, Let's man. Let's do it. Um, you ready for the speed round? Got him, got him. Favorite wrestler, current. Oh, favorite wrestler, current. Uh, uh, I'm going to go. That's a hard one. I'm just going to yeah. go easy. Uh, Seth Rollins. Favorite wrestler of all time? Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Give me a hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Favorite female wrestler? Current. Currently? Yeah. Currently. Uh, uh, I'm going to go, yeah, I'm going to go with Becky. No. Jade Cargill. Oh, that's hey. my man. I like this man right here. I love this man right here, man. That's my dude. Correction. We like Jade. Correction. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we love Jade. Big fan. Okay, correction. Big fan. I love Jade. Big fan. Yeah, I love Jade. Favorite female wrestler of all time? Trish Stratus. Mm, I, like mm, I like that. I like, I like that. that. Come on, man. Favorite high flyer, current. Favorite high flyer currently. That's a great question. Um, favorite high flyer currently. Um, it's a lot of them. I know. There's a ton to think about. You know, I'm gonna give some love to my guy right now. I'm gonna give love to my guy Axiom. Okay, okay. okay. Axiom's a good. Yeah. One, yeah. Uh, favorite uh, favorite high flyer of all time. Ray Mysterio. Oh, yeah. You got yeah. to, man. I think that's everybody's. I think yeah, you have to. Yeah. Um, I'm going to switch it up a little bit. Favorite rapper of all time? Ooh. Favorite rapper of all time is Jay Z. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All it's right. Go, Hove. go. Hey, go. Gotta be Hove. Gotta, gotta be okay. Hove. Okay. Gotta be Hove. <laughs> okay. Hey, right. man, H Town rapper Slim Thug. Okay. okay. You know, I was going to go there next, but hey. Slim. And rest in peace, Pimp C. Yeah, rest in peace. Rest in peace, Pimp. Um, favorite. Uh, Favorite tag team currently? Favorite tag team currently? Uh, I'm going to give it up. I'm going to give it up for KO and Sammy. Okay. KO and Sammy, yeah. okay. That might be a cop-out, but I like them. All time. All time. It's hard for me not to say Harlem Heat, um, but just to mix it up a little bit, I'm going to go with the New Age Outlaws. Okay. okay. All That's right. We got it on the speed round. Yeah, the speed there we go. That's a good one. That's a good one. Well, man, again, Brad, man, it's been an honor having you on here. This is like... One of my bucket list guests. So, I, oh, oh man, you, you I mean, right, I'm, I'm a fan, yeah, he, bro. You, man, so. this is surreal right now. We got oh, Brad, the Brad Gilmore, the Brad, the Gilmore. Brad Gilmore, the two time author, two time. Yes, that's right. That's right. <laughs> On the CW, look, he, yes, said, that's right. he yeah. said Tuesday, and I was like, you know what, guys. We got to drop everything we're doing. We got to do <laughs> yeah, do it. Yeah. Hey, I appreciate y'all. I said we had to drop oh, yeah, everything uh, we're doing. No, no, no. And here's the thing. I want, look, and I appreciate all the praise, and I appreciate the opportunity in the moment. Um, but, but y'all, I want to give the flowers to y'all, you know, mm, there are not enough it. people who shine the light on, you know, when you have your wrestling shows, obviously we talk about WWE, we talk about AEW and things, mm -hmm. not enough people shine the light on their local independent wrestling, which is yeah. really the lifeblood. The only natural resource those companies have yeah. is mm -hmm. companies like reality wrestling. And the fact that y'all put a spotlight 
on all our stars at Reality Wrestling and everybody here in Texas is awesome. There's not enough shows like y'all. There's not enough people as passionate as y'all to do all these things that you're doing to go the extra mile to produce these shows on a weekly basis and really just, you know, give it up for the city and give it up for the performers. I bow to y'all, man. It's an honor for oh, me. Oh, man, we appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, man, with that being said, man, again, um, we appreciate all our fans. Um, make sure you guys follow us on social media and everything like that. Hey, man, but I'm Mikey Man, Start of Facts. And this your boy, Zillow Smoke. And this your boy, you know, Dapper Dan, cool as a fan. Yeah. I might be in your mom's sedan. Oh! The guru oh. Dynamite. Don't watch me watch Dynamite TV. And we're down with the PWO. You are down for life. life.